under his wings. 529, I am safely abiding. to request a song? Yes, Price. Number one? Number one? Number one. Number one. Number one. <clears throat> Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation.
like a song to sing? Number 10. Number 10. Come, Christian, join to sing. At this point, uh, we cannot wait for our speaker, so we will proceed to our Sabbath school. Then we'll give time to our speaker after Sabbath school this morning. One more song. One more song. Together, together. Number eight. For our next song, shall please open your hymnals to hymn number eight. We gather together. And could we all stand, please?
Thank you, for, um, praise team, and happy Sabbath to everyone. Um, welcome to um, Sabbath school. So we will start with the Sabbath school first. Before anything else, um, we'll um, have an um, opening song for um, Megan, and then a prayer with um, Kuya RV, and a video of um, the lineage journey afterwards.
Thank you, um, Ate Megan. Shall we all stand for our opening prayer? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord, we thank you once again for another wonderful Sabbath day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for being with us all throughout the week with whatever we have been doing, our Lord, taking care of us, keeping us safe, and helping us to survive the six days. And as we enter the Sabbath day to rest, Thank you for bringing us all here today once again for another Sabbath day. And may you bless us and keep us safe all throughout the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The, um, the second episode for our um, lineage journey is, is entitled Scotland's Braveheart. Isolated from the rest of Britain and Europe lies the island of Iona, off the coast of Scotland. Yet from this small, barren, and windswept island, a great impact would be felt far and wide. Columba, the great missionary and trainer of missionaries, made this, made this his base and set up a school that would last for several centuries. Let's watch the video for a lineage journey. Whilst the long night of the dark ages covered Europe and darkness covered the people, the lamp of truth still shone brightly in Scotland and Ireland. These two countries on the brink of the known world stood like a wall to resist the menace of advancing religious tyranny. Scotland in particular, like the Waldenses in Northern Italy, found in her rugged mountains a fortress. Iona is an isolated island that has become famous in Christian history. It became a central point to the Celtic church for many centuries, preserving true biblical faith, teaching, educating, and sending out missionaries. The story of Iona starts with a man by the name of Columba, who was actually from Ireland and was born of royal descent. He lived in Ireland and worked there till the age of 32. And from the ages of 25 to 32, he is credited with raising up over 300 churches, having a missionary spirit burning deep within him. He set sail from Derry in the year 563 with 200 of his companions and came to Scotland. They landed here in Iona, just off the coast of the Isle of Mull, in this bay, which is today named Columbus Bay. Despite finding a windswept and barren island, they built houses, planted crops, and founded a Christian school, which would later attain the highest reputation for the pursuit of biblical study and science. The students had a well-rounded education, and in addition to their classes, they would spend time in physical labor, in gardening, in baking, in farming, and in prayer and singing. The students would frequently have to spend 18 years of study before they were ordained for the gospel ministry. It was not a monastery and they were not monks. It was a great mission training institute. The Bible was central to Columba and the school here in Iona. Columba built a church on the Bible and the Bible alone and is credited with copying 300 copies of the New Testament himself with his own hands. Imagine how many copies his students and fellow faculty produced over the many years the school was based here on this little island of Iona. They followed the commandments of the Bible, including keeping the fourth commandment. In fact, the church here in Iona kept the Sabbath for several centuries. 
In many ways, the believers here were preserving a faith that was handed down to them over the generations since the earliest believers. They did not see themselves as reformers or as breaking away from Rome, for the faith that they kept had been around much longer. Columba labored here for 34 years before passing to his rest on the 9th of June, which was a Sabbath day. Iona would for many centuries be a leading center of the Celtic church, sending missionaries out from the shores of Scotland flowing to the continental church. Columbus followers would hold this island for 641 years before they were driven out by the Benedictine monks. Iona stands to us today and gives us lessons in the missionary work that took place here. While today many people come for a time of peace, reflection, and contemplation, a place where they can feel closer to God, we cannot deny the work that took place here. Maybe God is calling you to go and get trained, like the missionaries who would come here to be trained and would go out for service. Maybe God is calling you to be trained for mission service. Maybe he's calling you to a life of full-time ministry. Maybe God is calling you to change the whole course of your life. And if God is calling you, harden not your heart and follow the Lord's leading. Amen, church. Yes. Um, our next one is um, the mission story. But um, it was like um, the same thing as the Colomba did. Went out um, to the place that he didn't know um, and do some missionary work there. Um, our mission story is about a man that um, from Brazil went to, all the way to India and found the spiritual life of a Christian. There are many definitions of prayer out there, so you may probably have one of your own, but the others have says it is the hotline to, the hev to heaven, a nonstop conversation with heaven that begins in childhood and the heartbeat of the Christian faith. Prayer is where the power is, really. Um, without prayer, I think we can't really move on for Christians that um, we, we believe that prayer... Um, when we pray, we reach God and we talk to God, um, whatever we wanted him to know about us. So there are three options on how we can connect on, with him, with Jesus, with our God. Um, there's one, it's a, um, Acts, a pattern to remind us of flow in conversation. So Acts is an actually um, acronym. A for adoration. C for confession, T for thanksgiving, and S for supplication. So it, it is not like um, this we should really follow. We should um, adore him for um, do some adoration, confession. But then again, it depends on what your hearts desire. But this is just an um, option of what we should be really um, doing when we pray. Um, we don't forget to thank Jesus, of course, in everything that we do. And the second one is ask, seek, and knock. I think we all know this one, Matthew 7.7. 7. This is what Dorothy Eaton once referred to as whole brain prayer. That engages us auditorily, which is our ears, visually, which is our eyes, and kinesthetically, which is our body. So this is from Prayer Treasures, um, pages from 28 to, 20, to 33. Um, the third one is the texture. So I think um, this one, we decide the length of a study. So it's not probably, in some of us, we say it's our devotion. We, um, a lot of time for, for us to have a devotion with our Lord and choose the text that summarizes our current um, needs. Um, it is as, as well sometimes just to remind us um, of that text, especially if it, really um, that says it all because some of all the texts it's not some but all the texts in the bible it pertains on how we feel on how we want to talk to god isn't it so when we sometimes 
what I do, I just flip my Bible and then it gives me the, um, the text and I read it sometimes. But if, it, if you have some um, problems, if you need something, the Bible is always there to answer our, our, our needs, our, our thoughts, um, our desires. It's there. So let's make it a habit that we always um, uh, read our Bible. We always um, make it a habit that we always, um, we always um, open this book. There's a big book, big as like this, or there's a smallest one as this one. Because in, in your mobile phone, your Bible is always there anyway. <laughs> it's an application that you can always carry. But you have to download the, the verse that you, um, the, like the New King, version, um, New King James Version, so you can do it offline as well, even if you don't have a um, signal. So there's no point, there's no um, excuses that you can't open your Bibles. So we look at the who of the prayer, which is God and His children, as well as what and how of prayer. It is the options that I've given. So the acts. Seek, knock, and um, ask, seek, and knock, and the text tour as well. So now let's consider where. Where? I think some of our hymns, great hymns, gave us an insight to um, what um, our hearts desire. Um, whatever, like the songs that um, we'll be singing or the songs that we hear sometimes, um, we will say, yeah, that's me. I feel that song because it pertains in my life as well. So that's where as well. It, it can be our prayer as well. And um, Psalms is a prayer um, with songs written by David anyway. So Luke 18, one, 18, chapter 18 and verse 1 says, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. In um, New King, uh, in NIV, New International Version, it says, um, Then Jesus told his disciples parable to show, that, to show them that they should always pray and not give up. So do not give up. Um, always um, pray and always um, remember that God will answer our prayer. It may not be yes always, but it will be answered. It, not might, it might not be the one that we want to be answered, but it will be answered eventually. Um, wherever we desire to have a little talk to Jesus, it's a good time. It, you may, some people will say, I want to find a peaceful place or some, you know, something that secluded. There are people who have their own prayer room, isn't it? But anytime really, Jesus don't want you to be just in, oh, this place, this is my prayer room. I'll pray here only now. But anytime is a good time and a t right place for you to pray. Wherever your heart desires, you want to pray, you can pray anytime. Um, and because we want to know where, um, we, we'll have um, Jaggi for a special item and then we'll have the mission story and we'll break for a lesson. Then I am 
Ronnie moved from Brazil to Egypt to work on a special project, trash. In Brazil, he owned a successful company that recycled electronic equipment. But eventually, Ronnie felt like he was being called in another direction by God. I have this passion to help people. I thank the Lord because he gave me a wife who shared the same passion and had the same dream. Almost three years ago, we decided as a couple to give our life to help others or to do what God wants from us. We start to, to, to see what God wants from us and He leads us until here. So for us, uh, the most important thing is to help others and to follow God's steps. If you ever visit Cairo, you might notice there aren't many places to put trash. 
Throughout the city, piles of trash can be seen burning along the sides of the roads. Ronnie moved to Nile Union Academy with the goal of cleaning up the campus and community around the Adventist school. Ronnie noticed that the wall surrounding the campus had become a community dump for trash. When Ronnie first came, the city workers would only clean the wall area once every two months. He started the project by going out and cleaning the wall area every day. It, it's fun to notice it day by day, that one, because uh, they keep throwing the garbage in our wall. They saw us clean every day, but they keep camping. And sometimes I ask some of them, they say, it's because we have no other option, no other solution. So I'm sorry, but your wall is our own solution. As the piles of garbage piled up every day, people told him that he would never last and should give up. After about a year, Ronnie has built relationships with community leaders and they have recognized his efforts. Now they send trash pickup three times a week. Ronnie works closely with the academy students to educate and employ them to be stewards of the earth. And it's fun to see now these students, when they start, we start to cheat them, a lot of them come and ask me, I want to work with you. So before, you can ask the school before, no one wants to work with the garbage. They used to collect the garbage and burn the garbage inside the school. And that was the... The, the last job that they choose to, to work uh, uh, the whole year, the whole semester. Now we have a, a, a line wait for work with us in the next semester. They want to work with us. They can see something good on that. And that's good to see in the students inside anyway. Ronnie has created trash systems to teach them the proper way of disposal and recycling. So what we are planning to do here inside of anyway, inside the campus of the school, it's teaching the students, the workers, the teachers to separate the garbage in three different kinds. So we separate by color to make it easier for everyone to understand. Green means anything recyclable goes inside. Brown cans get food waste or compost that is used for the academy farm. And gray is for regular trash or anything you are unsure of. They use this system on campus and are slowly introducing it to the community. Once things are separated, all recyclables are brought to the campus sorting facility. Plastics, glass, and cardboard are all sorted and organized for the next step. Then we, we press them in this machine to sell it. So we can uh, clean the communities, try to have a better way, to, better way to, to treat the garbage, and also try to make money to improve uh, human developments for the community. So that's what we do inside here. Since they have begun, they have moved more than 250 tons of garbage. However, their plans don't end with cleanup. Community members are not only changing their view of how to treat trash, but they will eventually benefit from a beautiful community park outside the walls of the academy. We are here to try to bring some human developments, to be a good influence for the community, to uh, show the community how we can work together to make relationship with the community, such as uh, uh, be an influence over them, to, to bring human development, to make their lives better in all the way, and emotional, uh, social, be a good influence over them, change some lives through the way that we are living here and the changes we are bringing here. Please pray as Ronnie and Nile Union Academy work to improve their community. Pray that they can build relationships with the people around them. That's not a, a dream job. No one dreams to collect garbage every day for the rest of life. It's not my dream too. So for me, it's the best place because I really understand that's what God wants for me now, to help this community to understand that, to change their lives, to improve their lives. So I'm very happy with that. So it's not a dream job. It's not the life I used to have in Brazil, but I never have been so happy in my life because I'm following what God wants. Amen, church. Yeah, God is calling you in any way. This one man started um, change, and he's changed a lot, um, that wall. And hopefully, um, by giving our... Um, offering 
it will help them as well build that um, dream part that they started. Um, for um, before we um, break for our lesson study, um, we'll have a video and then we'll break up um, group one and group two and the um, kids will go to the children's room for the primary. Kindergarten will stay here and the PowerPoint at the back and Cornerstone. Cornerstone at the back and at the very back are the PowerPoints. Okay, thank you. And happy Sabbath. What kind of tree is that? Wait, I know. It's an apple tree. How can you tell? Because it's got apples on it. Apples are my favorite fruit. No, oranges. Wait, bananas. Bananas are definitely my favorite. My favorite fruit is love. Love? Love isn't a fruit. Sure it is. Love is a fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the what? The fruit of the spirit. In the book of Galatians, Paul writes about love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we walk with the Holy Spirit, that's the fruit we can expect to see in our lives. I'm not a tree. I don't have fruit. The fruit of the Spirit doesn't grow on trees. It grows in us because of what we are. An apple tree naturally makes apples. An orange tree naturally makes oranges. And a banana tree makes... Bananas! Right. And all who follow Jesus have God's Holy Spirit living inside them. So when they choose to let God's Holy Spirit guide them, what naturally comes out is... Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right. All the fruit of the Spirit. And just like you can tell an apple tree by its apples, the fruit of God's Holy Spirit lets others know that we belong to God. But without the power of God's Holy Spirit, Paul says a different fruit grows in us, the fruit of our sinful nature. That does not sound good. It isn't. That fruit is selfishness, pride, anger, envy, disobedience, greed, fighting, and anything that keeps us from getting along with each other and loving others the way God does. That fruit always makes us want more stuff because we think stuff can make us happier than God can. That fruit leaves us empty instead of full. Ew, I don't want that fruit. I want love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But I get angry sometimes, and I'm not very patient. Guess I'll just have to try harder. Paul tells us trying harder won't get us anywhere. That's because our own strength only lasts a little while. But those who follow Jesus have declared that their sinful nature is dead. Now we can choose to live by the power of God's Holy Spirit instead. We can spend time with Him and pray and get to know Him, for real. And as we get to know God's Holy Spirit more... I know. The power of God's Holy Spirit will make more of the fruit of the Spirit grow in us. Like bananas! <laughs> like bananas. We have until 10 to 12 to discuss the Sabbath school lesson. Um, shall we separate into our Sabbath school classes according to what um, Sister Kate has um, said?
We should be wrapping up our Sabbath school lesson. prayer by Sister Marva.
can we close our eyes for prayer? Dear kind and heavenly Father, I want to thank you for bringing us here safely today. We thank you, dear Lord, for your words, your inspiration, and we pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to develop and have that connection with you. We pray, dear Father God, that we may um, obtain the, the fruit of the Spirit, and that way we may encourage others to ha have the fruits also. We pray, dear Lord, that you will bless us now as we enter into our divine service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.